my little village is a nice place to live in. People in the main mind their own business. A man does his job, earns his living, he's left alone. I'm a sort of uh, celebrity or oh, something I'm ashamed of, something I'd rather forget. The village knows it but doesn't mention it. We're all Christians in the village. Me too. But 20 years ago, when they crucified Jesus, no one was. Well, there was no such thing. I was told that you went to hear him and he gave you a simple way of looking at things. Food for thought. It was only after he was dead that the disciples really started working at making what he had said into a religion. Terrible death he had. People say he knew what was going to happen, that it was all in the scriptures, that he was a prophecy come true. Well, maybe, but I'm sure there was nothing in the scriptures about how we dressed him up, made fun of him, mocked him, jeered at him. All right, soldiers can get rough, but we were really rough. I wish to God I could say I hadn't joined in. But I did. I don't know who first thought of, of, of dressing Jesus up to look like a king. But it seemed funny at the time. None of our platoon was the sort of trial they gave him. All we knew was that he was a troublemaker who had gone around saying he was king of the Jews. We knew very little. We were a Roman garrison. Our orders came from Pilate, Pontius Pilate. The order was clear. A scourging and crucify him with two other criminals. Not many people have seen a Roman punishment scourge. It's the worst whip ever invented. It's designed to break skin, wrap round and tear. It can kill a man. People ask me, why scourge a man is going to be killed the same morning? Well, it wasn't the first time. Pilate was hard. He was also fed up with the whole business. I did not do the whipping. A great big sergeant from Syria did that. But I, I put the robe on. One of the lads found it somewhere, a purple robe to make Jesus look like a king. But when I put it on him, he looked like a corpse. He was naked. And that sergeant knew his job. Jesus could hardly stand. His back was like raw meat. I dream about it. One of the boys made a crown out of twisted together thorn stalks and forced it down on Jesus' head. More blood. Then we stood him on a vegetable basket, marched round him, bowed, saluted, shouted in his face. And when his head dropped, we slapped it up again. 
we gave him a big onion for an orb and a twig for a scepter. Then we spat on him and laughed and laughed till we were weak, till we cried. I've cried many times since, mostly in my sleep. I can't say the shame began right away. It did not. As a soldier, you do many things you wouldn't do in civilian life. But out of service, by yourself, it's time to look back. You see things differently. About uh, eight years ago, a year after I had been demoted, I met Peter the fisherman. I was in a bad way. I told Peter all about that night and my shame. Peter listened and then said, I know about shame. On that night, he was a nobody to you, a stranger to be made fun of. On that night, I'd known him for three years. I believed him to be the Son of God. I was his first friend and follower. Yet, on that night, in fear, I denied that I knew him three times. I think Peter said that to comfort me. He did a bit, but not much. Nothing does very much. You know, I haven't talked about that night for years. I think about it. I, I, I dream about it. But I don't often talk. talk. It's strange how talking somehow loosens the memory. All sorts of other things come back. As I said, my shame of joining in that night didn't start till some time after. We were a rough lot. We were Roman occupation troops. We regarded a convicted prisoner as fair game. It broke the monotony. So did a crucifixion. We didn't like the job. But if we were detailed, that's it. Our duties were clear. They have a regulation, the rule book. The crosses were ordered normally three at a time. That's because normally three criminals were done together. There used to be a joke. First made by Pilate, it seems. He seemed to have said, Do you mean threes? Nice company for each other. A hard cruel man was pilot with jokes to match. The prisoner carried his cross, or at least dragged it with the crossbar over his shoulder. Very heavy the crosses were. A long up and down winding route would be worked out so that as many people as possible could see the criminal and read the crime written on a board carried by the lead corporal. Jesus' board just said, King of the Jews. Another pilot joke. When the Jewish elders wanted it changed, he refused. He got very nasty. Jesus couldn't carry his cross. Not surprising. He'd been flogged half to death. So, 
I pressed in to service a man from the crowd. It was in regulations. He couldn't refuse. There were regulations for everything. The distance apart of the crosses, the nailing of the hands and feet, crowd control, periods of watch, everything. There were also certain perks, extra pay, extra drink ration, the kneeling part, bloody business. Extra leave the following week. We were also entitled to the clothes and uh, possessions of the prisoners. Uh, we decided who got what by casting lots or gambling. Jesus didn't have any possessions. His clothes and sandals were poor stuff. We did far better with the other two criminals we hung with him. Oh, they made a lot of noise, those two. Shouting and screaming. Sometimes sensibly, sometimes like crazy or drug men. There were women who offered drugged wine to those on the cross. Sisters of mercy. It was allowed in regulations. Jesus refused. He didn't say very much. At one point, I think he said a few words of comfort to the fellow on the left. There were some women who seemed to know him a little way off. None of his followers or disciples were there. They were all lying low, out of sight in hiding. We put the prisoners up at nine in the morning. Fine, sunny morning. But at noon, the sun went in. It got darker and darker, and very still and close. Most unusual. Frightening. Never before or since. At about three o'clock, all three had been quiet for some time. They'd been up six hours. Suddenly Jesus raised his head and looked up at the sky. His face was the light, his voice and body full of power. Then he shouted in a loud voice, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. The crowd in the weird twilight grew scared and nervous. My mates moved in a bit. Then Jesus shouted again with the same lift of the head, the same power. It is finished. He died magnificently. One of the things that got him hung was saying that he was the Son of God. At that moment, I believed he was the Son of God. I believed it ever since.